There, good evening, folks. Today I was just taking a little bit of time considering what the Apostle Paul spoke of when he was speaking about his being made all things unto all men, that he might by all means save some. And analyze my own approaches before other parties, I think this is an area for myself anyways that I find lacking, is trying to find a way with which I can ease the tensions, make the party that I'm gonna, going to be conversing with a little more at ease, more a little more comfortable with my presentation. And I think these are considerations that are certainly helpful to help bridge some of the uneasy feelings that one may have when being presented with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the beauty about going door to door is that you actually get to go to the party's house. You get a sense as to what their status might be, if they have children, and those are all things that you and I can utilize in our discussions to try to ease the tensions between the individual. But the problem obviously being online is that you, we don't see all those things. We have other hurdles that we have to try to jump in terms of trying to establish rapport with that party so they feel a little more at ease with what we're going to present in terms of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I don't know about you folks, I, I've had a difficult time on that front. Typing as well as a form that doesn't really show our demeanor. It doesn't reveal our disposition at all. It's, it's very difficult for the party to understand where you're coming from. And in a lot of cases, despite the fact you may not intend to offend anyone, somebody may very well take offense for something that was not intended to offend at all. So we got a, a few things against us online that obviously we don't have when we're going door to door or, we're, or when we're confronting that party face to face. You know, I can, I can approach presenting the saving gospel of Jesus Christ on a multitude of different levels, all of which, as Paul says, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached and he rejoiced. In the end, God will honor that, provided the word gets out, his word will not return void. But it certainly makes our job more difficult if we don't have those bits of information to help us to direct the conversation in a way that that party would feel a little more comfortable. I could go and I can knock on a person's door, and I can kick their door down, and I can tell that party, well, accept Jesus, accept Jesus Christ, and plead the blood of Jesus Christ, receive as your Savior, rest confident, solely in the person to finish work of Jesus Christ, you will burn in hell. Would I be telling the party the truth? Absolutely. You know, and if I couple that with Scripture, absolutely, God uh, could certainly use that. But you know, we don't we don't attract very many flies with vinegar. It's it's a lot more enticing if we can try to pr make our presentation in a fashion that is a little more palatable. So this is the kind of thing that, for myself, I know I struggle with. I don't know how you folks feel. Maybe you've got some things that you've done in time past that have helped you to su succeed in those areas. These are things that I struggle with. I know the Apostle Paul is concerning Timothy. He took Timothy aside and he circumcised Timothy for the intent of being made all things unto all men that he might by all means save some. And the Apostle Paul later on we know went to participate in the Jewish feasts because he had a, a great burden for the nation and people of Israel and he certainly uh, did everything within his power to try to reach that body of people. And it wasn't an essential, obviously, on his part as a New Testament believer to be a participant of those things, but in terms of trying to reach the Israeli body of people, to them, those things are important. So we have to consider that when we're talking to individuals, what's important to them, and then how can I identify with that party in a manner that doesn't violate the gospel, but at the same time provides an area of comfort to that individual that permits them to have the tension somewhat eased so that you can then proceed with preaching Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Another thing I might add that in the early going when preaching Jesus Christ, it's probably better to address 
maybe our personal shortcomings and how we fall short of the glory of God and make it less personal until you get some form of a signal from that indiv individual that they're a little more comfortable, that they're a little more prepared to discuss those things on a more candid level with you and be a little more honest. They'll give you some form of a signal. So when, we, when you perceive that those signals are, are given, they're getting their nods or they say, oh yeah, no, those are indicators that they're in agreement. And then you can start to move ahead and say, well, I know I'm a sinner. I fall short of the glory of God. And I'm sure you feel the same way yourself, right? That, that kind of thing eases the tension. And these are just things that you and I have a disadvantage on when we're trying to converse with individuals concerning the saving gospel of Jesus Christ. I don't know, those are things that were on my mind. And any input that you people could put here that would help us maybe in areas where you have found success, you know, share it. Maybe we can implement some of those things in our own efforts to preach Jesus Christ and Him crucified. So we'll let you folks get on with your evening there, and I thank you for stopping by, and uh, you folks have yourself a good day.